line. It is in the Bible, I promise. John 21. John 21. This is a passage where <clears throat> Peter is um, really helped by the Lord. Aren't you glad that um, in those times when you really need the Lord to help, He comes and He helps? Um, it's a poor example, but I think about my earthly father that um, he told me of his dad. He said when his dad came, he said, I always knew my dad was coming to help. And that's a lesson that my dad took to heart. Because <clears throat> whenever he would come up here to Illinois, all he wanted to visit with me. But he was coming up here to help. He would help me on whatever I was working on or whatever I was doing. He just came to help. Now tonight, like if they were calling for cold weather and the possibility of snow, he would be leaving. But yeah, he would already been gone, Andrew said. I mean, all they had to do <coughs> was just mention snow. But you've got to keep in mind, in Tennessee, driving on the snow is different, okay? Because you've got hills both ways <coughs> and you've got curvy roads, at least here, it's a straight shot, and it's pretty well flat most of the way. Uh, so it's just different. Um, but back home, it was bad if it ever did get slick outside. People were just nuts around there. Anyway, um, but I'm glad to know that the Lord comes and He helps. And that's really something that happens. <clears throat> I think we probably focus a lot on the Apostle Peter because you probably draw from this passage that maybe he got more help than everybody else and maybe he did to some degree but probably he needed it more than anybody else but I got a feeling that this uh, interaction this encounter with Jesus did all of them a whole lot of good so let's read this passage then I'll share some things with you hopefully after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. In this way, he showed himself. Simon, Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. And Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. How can he fault Peter? He wanted to go fishing. There's nothing wrong with a guy going fishing, right? Okay. Anyway. They said to him, we're going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat. And you will find some. So they cast and... Now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and he plunged into the, into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. <clears throat> Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, yet uh, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples asked him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time that Jesus had showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. 
He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend to my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. When you were old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. Father, help us to understand your word. We thank you for it. In your name we pray. Amen. I want to talk with you tonight just briefly about um, mending cracked pots. You remember this morning the message was on the fact that we are the clay pots that God has entrusted precious treasure. He has given us the gospel which is the most priceless treasure that man has ever been given. The message of salvation and God has entrusted that to us and He has put it on display through us and in our lives. We said this morning that sometimes these clay pots which are very fragile get pressed and persecuted. We get pummeled sometimes, knocked down. But we're not utterly in despair, nor are we destroyed. But sometimes... Sometimes I think these clay pots, we can get a crack. Now, if that happens, what do you do? Are we doomed to live with the crack forever? I'm afraid some Christians are okay with that. You don't have to be. I don't think we have to be. I don't believe that we're doomed, that we've got to live with these cracks forever. I think there's a way to mend the, uh, the broken uh, pottery, mend the broken uh, vessels, and get them back to where they hold water and do the job that they were created by God to do. Now, you know, a lot can... Um, happen to put a crack in a clay pot it really does not take much I dare say you could weed eat a hole in the side of one if you've had it very long certainly if you have any amount of impact on the clay pot it's going to break or crack you know you hit it with a sledgehammer just that little bit of impact she's break it all to pieces <laughs> Cast it down upon the earth. Throw it on the ground. It'll break it. It'll do it. Um, a lot of things can put stress <clears throat> on those clay pots and cause the cracks to occur. Well, I think that the Apostle Peter, in the beginning of this passage, for sure, if there was ever a cracked pot, that had the precious treasure in it. Here's a crack pot. Sometimes our life fit in line with Peter. And I told you, the Lord came to put him back together and fix him. And he can do that for us as well. You remember before the crucifixion, Peter, he was a crack pot and didn't know it. There's a lot of people out there like that. They've got glaring cracks that other people can see. But they think they're fine. They don't see the dire situation that they are in. But as the way he sees everyone, maybe the other disciples didn't see the cracks that Peter had that were going to be made glaringly worse in just a short time. But Jesus 
saw the cracks that were there and that they would be made worse. Peter, before the crucifixion, was bold and confident and absolutely wrong in his estimation of Jesus' accuracy about what was going to take place and in his estimation of how he was going to handle the situation that Jesus told him was coming. Peter was wrong. He was just wrong. I'm sorry to tell you that we are all wrong on so many fronts at different times. We really do need the Lord's understanding and perspective and direction. Because left to ourselves, we're, we're like a kid that hadn't studied for a test. We're just giving it our best guess. And we're going to get sometimes things right, but a lot of times, more often than not probably, when you're just guessing, you're going to get it wrong. And that's no way to make it successfully through life. He was wrong. And when the pressure came, when the pressure came, he cracked. That night after Jesus had been taken into custody and the other disciples had pretty well split, Peter was there and in the wrong place at the wrong time. And let me say it again, it's never the right time to be at the wrong place. Okay, if it's the wrong place, it's always the wrong time. And that's where Peter was. <clears throat> and before he could get out of there, exactly what Jesus told him was going to happen, before that rooster crows two different times, you're going to deny three times that you know who I am, that you even know me. You're going to deny any association whatsoever with me. You are going to absolutely lie, Peter. And he didn't think he would, but when the time came and the pressure, remember that pressure can break that gazing ball I told you about. What broke that gazing ball was the pressure. The concrete put more pressure on that thing than it could handle. And when I tra if I would have laid it on a, a pillow or something and transferred it out, it would have been fine. But when I put all that pressure and brought it to bear at one point, it broke apart. Couldn't take the pressure. Peter couldn't either. The cracks widened and deepened and got worse. And he denied he even knew the Lord. So how do you mend a crack like that? How do you fix it if it happens? And probably more than once it's happened to all of us. We've had some cracks the Lord's needed to fix. Well, the first thing you've got to do is realize that there's a crack. Now, before the three denials of Peter, he didn't think he had any cracks at all. If you would have asked him, he was fine. But as soon as the rooster crowed that second and final time, he knew what he'd done. And it was glaringly obvious to him what had been glaringly obvious to the Lord. You got a problem. And he realized <clears throat> in truth maybe for the first time that he had this big problem. And the Bible says that he went out and he wept bitterly. He wept bitterly. Why? Because he realized I got a problem. A lot of people go off course right here. They will not acknowledge their problems. They won't acknowledge them before other people and they won't acknowledge them before God. And until you realize that it is a problem, there is a crack, you'll never get serious about getting them fixed. 
You need to listen to other people when they talk to you about the cracks you got. Spiritually. Because we may not like to hear it. I'll be honest with you. I don't. Andrea? (laughs) The Lord points out plenty of cracks in my life. He did not have to make you so discerning as well. (laughs) But you know what? I'll be honest with you. I, I think even though you don't like to acknowledge some things sometimes, I am a better person because of the cracks that the Lord has used her to point out to me. Young people, let me say this. Your parents, they're not just trying to get on to you just because they want to, as my mom say, just talking to hear my head rattle. There are, there are, there are cracks that your parents see that they know will deepen and widen and become more of an issue for you if you don't deal with them. It's a wise individual, number one, that listens to the Lord. And Peter should have done that, but he didn't. And I don't know if any of the other disciples pulled him aside and said, Peter, you know Jesus has really been right on everything so far. You might want to listen to him. I don't know if they did that or not, but... If you are fortunate enough in your life to have a husband or a wife or a mother or a father that loves you enough to pay attention to watch what you're doing and and that sees the things that are cracks, that lovingly says, hey, why don't you work on this? it's, It's foolish to ignore those things. And it's foolish to ignore those that try to help you because I'll guarantee you if they pointed it out whether it's the Lord or somebody here they'll try to do all they can to help you fix it God does not say brother Tom here's the problem now just do the best you can with it and I will guarantee you there's not a parent here that says son daughter here's the problem too bad you're just on your own to fix that they would we, we would help you any way we could First thing you get is you got to realize, though, that there's a problem. And sometimes the, the Lord points them out. His Word points them out. Sometimes somebody that cares about you points them out. Says, here's a crack. Let's get this thing fixed. Begin work immediately on that. Okay? Peter didn't. He didn't at all. In John chapter... 21, after he had um, failed miserably when confronted with his um, uh, association with Jesus, denied it outright three times. John chapter 21, verse 3, you will see that Peter says, I'm going fishing. Going fishing. Now, I suppose... A person could fault Peter and say, well, he wasn't supposed to be fishing. He was supposed to be following the Lord and he was supposed to be doing something else. And there's a point to be made there. But I would like to point this out. One thing Peter was not going to do any longer was sit and do nothing. You may not believe this, but this is true. When you're sitting and doing nothing, if you don't think you can get yourself in a whole lot of trouble, you are sadly mistaken. You you may make a wrong uh, make a wrong turn and have to have to go over the same real estate twice to make a and, and I'm not of the not this is not do something even if it's wrong. You know my opinion on that. If it's wrong, 
Don't do it. But in your best attempts to be active for the Lord in doing something, that's always better than just the let's sit back and do nothing. Because like I said, you'll find yourself in a whole lot more trouble just sitting back doing nothing. The devil can use that and, and trip you up and, and, and get you mixed up and messed up in, in more ways than you can count. Peter wasn't going to sit any longer. He was going to do something. That's a good quality of life. It really is. And you know something else? When he said that though, I want you to notice what happened. It wasn't just Peter that went fishing. There were some other people that followed him. <clears throat> and the reason I want to point this out is because whether you realize it or not, for good or bad, there are people that you're associated with and there may be some people that have influence on your life. And I hope that the people that you let have influence on your life are people of good character and um, people that will influence you in the right direction. But Peter, when he said he was going fishing, there were a lot of guys that said, hey, we'll go with you. We'll join you. And I, I bring this out to say that the decisions that you make, they don't just affect you. They affect other people. They affect other people. When you and I determine to do something and we follow a course, invariably, there will be somebody to some degree that takes up the journey with us, most likely. Be sure you're headed in the right direction and taking them the right direction. Because Peter, once he decided to go, there were others that, that followed him. But what does it take to be fixed? Well, Peter had to realize he had a crack that needed to be fixed. And he did. And then you have to be willing to listen to the Lord. You'll find this coming in in verse 6. When Jesus, and they didn't know it was Jesus yet, and he told them, cast the net on the right side of the boat. And they did what he said we've got to be willing to do what Jesus says to listen to him and not just listen to hear what he said so that we can file that in the index of our heart and mind and decide when we'll act upon it no the time for them to cast the net was then right then and they did. They listened to the Lord. We need to do that as well. Not only do they need to listen to the Lord so that He can instruct us what to do to get the problems fixed, but, but when you realize the Lord's there, and He is, you need to get to Him as fast as you can. As soon as Peter recognized that's the Lord, the quickest way for him to get there was not in that boat. He was close enough to land that he could outswim them maneuvering that boat back to land. And he jumped out of the boat. Listen, do you, do you, Peter had a lot of problems, but he always, always, always wanted to be near and with Jesus and get there as fast as he could. Yes, he denied that he knew the Lord three times, but it's because he was still hanging around close to Jesus to at least see what was going on. Whenever the boat was about to sink, and Jesus came walking to him on the water, it was Peter that jumped out of the boat and ran across, walked across the water to get to him. He wanted to be where Jesus was and get there as fast as he could, and that's what he did here. When he knew that that was the Lord... That's the one he wanted to be with. And he immediately forsook the others and left them behind and swam to shore to be with Jesus. 
get to him as fast as you can. And listen, let me tell you how far away Jesus is. He's not a brisk swim from the shore. He's one heart call away. He's one silent prayer away. He's one visit to the prayer closet away. He's one conversation away. And He's there waiting. Just like He was for Peter. He was there on the land waiting. And He had everything that Peter needed whenever Peter got there. He got to Jesus as fast as He could. And then, I want you to notice, how do you fix the cracked pot or a cracked vessel? Verse 15, He begins a... uh, trilogy, a triad, three different times asking Peter of his love. And he who had denied three times that he knew Jesus affirmed three times. Not as strongly as he should have, but still yet honestly. He affirmed three times that he indeed did love the Lord. How do you fix a crack? You reignite. You reaffirm that genuine love that you have for the Lord. Real love for Him does something to pull a broken heart back together and make it what it needs to be. It fixes a lot. Real love does that. He confirmed on three different occasions. And even the last one was painful to answer. Because he'd already told Jesus twice that he loved him. He said, Lord, you know everything. Lord, you know. You know I love you. He reaffirmed the genuine love that he had for the Lord. God told the Ephesian church they had a problem. You've left your first love. You need to come back to your first love. That's the problem He had with them. And they could be fixed and they could be helped if they would deal with that. Sadly, they didn't. And Peter reaffirmed that. I believe to fix a crackpot you need two more things and I'll be brief. Not only do you need to reaffirm that love, but you need to um, you need to come to grips with real forgiveness. There needs to be a receiving of forgiveness and there needs to be a giving of forgiveness. Peter here needed to receive forgiveness forgiveness he needed to be forgiven for the wrong that he had done and it's like um, you ever get a splinter those are fun aren't they you know what those silly little things just stay in there and they just fester and they just they just get worse and worse and more sore until you open that thing up and you get that splinter out And it hurts to get it out, but it feels better after you've got it out, and it can heal. That's forgiveness. Really being forgiven by the Lord clears away those things that shouldn't be there and makes healing and mending possible. But you know what? Sometimes... It may not be, there may be a crack in somebody's life, not because they've done wrong, but because someone has done wrong to them. And sometimes the forgiveness doesn't have to be received. Sometimes the forgiveness has to be given in order to be healed for the, for the, for the crack to be mended. Sometimes you have to forgive others. Sometimes 
You had to forgive yourself. What good would it have done Peter to have left here today having been forgiven by the Lord to just continue to beat himself up for the rest of his life over what he had done? Would that, would that undo that? Would that change what he did? Would it make it better? No. Sometimes, as they say, the offended brother that has to be forgiven is you forgiving yourself once the Lord has done that for you. Forgiveness is essential. Of course, God's grace and mercy um, patch us and put us back together. But I'm glad to know that God's serious about mending those cracks. Why? Go back to this morning's message. You've got precious treasure in these clay pots. And we need to keep them intact. We need to keep them intact. In order that we can be effective vessels suitable for God's use and for God's purpose. And if we're all cracked up, we won't be effective. Just as a just as a cracked pot, it doesn't deliver everything that it could. Because what should have gotten over here leaked out somewhere along the way. And let's make sure our lives are not like that. Father, we do thank you that you are the one that can fix the broken and the cracked parts of our lives. We've seen you do it and we've heard of you doing it. And we just need you to do that for us at times. Help us realize where the cracks are. And Lord, help us let you attend to the needs. so that you can fill us with all of the good things that you want to fill us with. And we hold and get those things delivered where you want them. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen.